Hey everyone, it's me, Katie Beth again. And if you had any contact with me this winter, you know that all I could talk about was this knitting machine. <laughs> and not just this one. I bought every single size ugh, that Amazon had. Which is basically three. Just three sizes. I make it seem like it's a lot, but it's not. So now that I've had time to try them all out, uh, let's talk about the different pros and cons tips and tricks and of course all the dumb stuff that I did that I didn't need to do but maybe I can stop you from doing. So if you're curious or in the market for one of these knitting machines, stick around and watch because I have a lot to say about these before you make your purchase. So now let's talk about size. <laughs> so according to my research, the largest one of these knitting machines that I could get was the 48 inch or 48 needle machine which I thought would be absolutely ginormous but uh it, it is bigger than all the other ones but the size hat that it produces is this this guy this is using all of the needles now the big size is what you want for adult and kid sizes so this is the size the size that I'm wearing so for adult hats you just make it longer and it'll squeeze over giant heads like this one. This one actually is a little tighter just because I washed it already. I didn't dry it, but I washed it so it did shrink it up a tiny bit. Now to make a kid's hat, you just make it shorter. So same size, so it'll just like slip right onto a kid's head or stretch for an adult's head. And you can fold it over too. The next machine in the size down is the 40 needle and that's this one. And I almost didn't get it because it didn't seem like that big a difference between sizes. But uh, yeah, it is. Amazon says that it's for children's hats, but that's basically a lie. By children's hats, they mean newborn to toddler. So this was the adult 48 inch needle hat. And then this is the kids 40 needle hat. It doesn't look like that big a difference, but a little shorter is the version that I made for my newborn niece. And she's a little newborn and this fit directly on her head. See, it's like a little tiny head. That's not for nine year olds with their giant heads. And it does stretch a little, but nine year, old head, nine -year olds almost have adult size heads, so it'd be quite a stretch. Let me try it on my big head. Yeah, that's not a good fit. And I, this is it super stretched out trying to stretch onto my giant head. But basically the four, the medium size 40 needle is for kids, but like babies only. And then the smallest one, the 22 needle machine, this is what I thought you'd be making baby hats with, but it's not. It makes the tiniest little heads that wouldn't even fit on a dog when I tried. Oh yeah, so the medium one is also the size that I use to make a Pomeranian hat, a little slouchy Pomeranian hat. And the small one that I thought would make tiny dog hats makes hats smaller than that. So this is the size that the small 22 inch makes, the one that's more like a kid's toy, but this is not gonna fit on a child. It's not gonna fit on a dog, maybe a little cat for a cat. But what I've been using them for are comical just the tip hats for cactus statues. <laughs> I've also been contacted by some, how do I say it, fans only pages for their photo shoots for different hats for their cactuses. <laughs> and I do have these on my Etsy shop. That's where people are contacting me about them. Oh yeah, and these other hats are in my Etsy shop also. So I'll put a link for that down below. So if you're looking to see what size of stuff you want to make, this is the largest machine with the 48 needles. This is the medium one with the 40 needles. And then this is the 22 needle machine. This product. The different sizes you got here. Uh, now Amazon does make an even smaller machine, which I didn't bother getting because it looks pretty better made maybe, but it's more expensive and makes a tiny little uh, cable or cord rope kind of thing, which I don't really have a need for right now, so I didn't want to spend the money on it. But they do actually make a teenier, tinier one if that's something you need. 
Also, other than what size of machine you want to get, I feel like the next most important thing to look for when shopping for one of these on Amazon or anywhere else is making sure that it has a counter on it. These two smaller ones that I initially got did not have a counter on them, so I couldn't tell how big I was going to make something. Like, big round-wise, yes, but length-wise, if you're just spacing out, you really have no idea how big you're making your product. To get any type of standardized sizing, like if I wanna make 10 of these hats and them all be the same size, you need to be able to count how many rows long you're making them. So that's where this counter comes in. The counter, they're not 100% accurate, but they're a whole lot more accurate than me just trying to count myself because it goes so quickly and even if you're spinning slowly, you lose count, you really do. But basically, when you spin this knob, once it goes around once, it gives you a count on here of how many rows you've done. And if you're trying to make anything at all standardized to sell or to make normal size hats for people, you really need this, you need to be able to count. So when you are on Amazon searching, don't just go for the cheapest price. Make sure it has that counter. Like, I think this one was like $2 cheaper than one with a counter. And in hindsight, I really wish that that was something I was looking for when buying these. But when I did my purchasing, I had no experience with these and I didn't know that that was something I needed. But it is something you need. So don't just go for the cheapest one. Go for the cheapest one with a counter. Other than that, they're pretty much all the same. Now let's talk about the pros and cons. So obviously the biggest pro is how quickly you can make a beanie with them. Traditionally, it would take me like two days to a week to make one of these hats. And with these knitting machines, I can make this hat in a half an hour. And that's because I'm slower. Other people can make them even quicker. And they do sell attachments that can make that potentially even go quicker. So you take this attachment, you put a little coupler over the handle. And then you take like a screw gun and stick that on there and it makes it go a lot quicker. However, I did not find that to be too helpful. One, the screw gun is really heavy. Like you have to hold this for 15 minutes to get your hat made which I did once or so, and it was a lot of work. And so then my mind naturally went to, let's get a, a lighter one. So I got this one for like 20 bucks at Target, and it did work a lot better, but it's battery operated. And about every hat, I'd have to replace four batteries. So that was getting kind of costly and irritating. So my next solution was going to Harbor Freight and getting this little rechargeable gun, super lightweight. It's actually my favorite of the solutions that I found. Uh, you do have to charge it about every hat and a half. Maybe it can go a little longer, but it does get slower when the battery gets lower. The problem I had with all of these is when I'm hand, doing it by hand, like I go pretty slow and I can see all the stitches and if a stitch gets skipped, I can kind of stop right away and try to figure out a way to fix it. Whereas when the machines are going, it's going so fast that more stitches get stitched, skipped, just because it's going so fast and it's not catching. And then when I see that it's not catching, by the time my brain processes, it's already like three rows down and I can't fix it at all. So the only way to fix it then is to completely take it off and try again. And yes, you could make a hat in 15 minutes, but because I had to take it off and redo it again, that's another 15 minutes. It was already half an hour, and I might as well have just been spinning this by hand. Additionally, if you get one row that skips and you keep going, the next row tends to skip a little further on and so on for a few rows and that tends to make holes in your hats. And very similarly on what contributes to how many rows are skipped or different holes in your hats basically, things that happen, is the conditions in which you're using them in. When I first got my knitting machine, I, was, I thought it'd be cool to just sit in bed and knit some hats and watch TV. Now there were several problems with that. You really need a stable surface to have these on for it to keep going. Hopefully you do it at the same pace. But when I was on my bed, like somehow because it wasn't a stable surface, I just had ran into a ton of problems. And I thought it was the machine, but then when I actually tried it on a steady state table, it worked so much better. And that also makes sense why all of the machines that I got came with these little 
suction feet, and the suction feet are to stick on the table so you can make it really sturdy and so it won't move. But because my workstations all need to be so portable because I'm constantly moving from rooms to room and taking things with me, um, I basically use TV trays, and these were just not sticking to the wooden TV trays. So, of course, I uh, made another modification, and that's why the largest one, the one that I use the most, is now screwed on to one of the TV trays. Now, it's not the sturdiest because it's a TV tray, but it is portable enough that I can move it from room to room with me, and if I wanna sit on my bed and watch TV, I can sit on the edge and still use the table, and it works fine. So that's the best solution I came up with to give these a sturdy station to work on. However, because it's screwed to the table, I made it not leave the house portable. It's portable, but within my house. So if I wanna do some knitting machine stuff on the go, I really only have the choice of bringing my smaller machines and then I can only make the little tiny hats. As far as brands go, um, most of the ones on Amazon are this brand, this Nindro, Nintro brand, but it really doesn't make that big a difference. This one's Crafts. Like one of my she machines, the one before I broke one. Oh, I've also had to repurchase two. And here's why. <laughs> Particularly with the tiny one, I started running into some problems that when I was using it, like it was getting louder and harder to spin and then the yarn would just jam up in there and I couldn't spin it, spin it at all without like breaking it. It became quite an issue and yes, I tried it with different measures of yarn, different weights of yarn. And now that we're onto that, let me talk about that. So these machines work best with really thin yarn or at thickest, the four medium. And you check which weight it is on the label of your yarn. So the four medium is the perfect weight to use. It's what I'm making all of these hats out of and it works really well in all of these knitting machines, but anything heavier than the medium four you're just gonna have all kinds of problems. Like it's hard to crank it, it skips a bunch of stitches, and it's really just too thick a yarn to use on these. I have uh, used some of like the weird fuzzy stuff, but it's, it's pretty much hell trying to use them. So to get a good product with these machines, you need to use a four weight yarn or a thinner yarn. They do pretty well with thinner yarns, but the thinner your yarn is, um, the looser your stitches are going to be because the needles don't change sizes. So you're not switching to a smaller needle for your yarn. So it's not going to be as tight of stitches. Like this one is with a slightly thinner yarn. And as you can see, it's like more stretchy than this because the yarn is thinner. So all the stitches are more loose. But back to the machine getting jammed. Yes, I did try thinner yarn, lighter yarn, and it still just kept getting jammed. And I was getting so angry with it that I just put it aside and stopped using it. But then my larger size one was having similar issues. But with the larger one, the bigger issue was more like a scraping sound. And because I was using it so much, it was around Christmas time. So I was making hats for everyone. And I was getting a lot of like dust, like scrapey dust, because every every part in this is pretty much just plastic, so just plastic scraping on each on itself continuously. So all of this was getting covered with dust, and then with all the yarn particles, I was thinking it might be kind of like a sewing machine, where when you use it so much, you get a lot of, a lot of lint, and with all the dust from the scraping, I thought maybe that's what was getting stuck in here and jamming this, and the smaller one. So I had the great idea that I would just take it apart and try to clean it like a sewing machine. It was not a great idea. With 48 needles in this, uh, they're like weaved into position just right. And when I took it apart, everything fell out and all the needles fell out. And I just didn't have the attention span to sit there and try to weave in 48 needles back into the right spot. And when I opened it, it seemed pretty clean. Like it didn't seem like it was jammed like a sewing machine with all the lint. So I was like, that might not even be the issue. So at the time I just took all the parts and put them to the side in the separate box to keep for spare parts, I guess. I really should have thrown it away, but because I'm a hoarder, I didn't. And that turned out to be a good thing because since this one I had screwed to this table, 
Um, of course, I set it in an unstable section and it fell. It just fell face down and it broke all of the legs attaching it to this. So it was great that I had extra parts because the parts were interchangeable. And that's it, it was a different brand of knitting machine. I think they're all pretty much the same knitting machine, just different brands have been put on them. This one is the Centro brand, but the last one I had also, I believe it said Centro on it, but then had a sticker of another brand right over it. And like the same font, but it was another brand. But basically the same machine. So I'm thinking all the ones out on Amazon are the same machine. Places are just putting their own brand on them. And yes, I am buying the cheap ones on Amazon. The ones at actual craft stores are like double the price and maybe they're double, double the quality. I really didn't check that out. So another thing I wanted to talk about with these is that they do come with instructions, but the instructions aren't great. So I wanted to go over a little bit of how you start your rows like how you weed these on and then how you take them off because the instructions are not clear and it took me a while to figure it out so let's just show a clip real quick of how to cast onto this and how to take your project off of it because i don't feel like the directions really do justice so this is how you cast on first you keep spinning it until you get the little white needle there's one needle that's either white or black it's a different colored needle mine is white on this machine now I take the tail and put it in the center of the machine and then starting with the white needle, every other needle I'm just going back and forth. And I get a little confused sometimes and that's why I like to do this part really slowly. So you have to catch every other needle. You have to catch every other needle and just keep going until you get all the way around. So once you get to the front, so that front one that you started on, you're going to want to catch in front of it again. And you put that, the rest of the tail from the, the big end through that center groove. And then I like to set my machine to zero. And see, I've already, I already would have had a skip here if I hadn't noticed it. So from where I was sitting, I couldn't see that this little top part here is not all the way down in the groove. Which makes it intermittent to catch and then you get a lot of those holes. So you have to make sure the yarn is all the way down in the groove. And then it pretty much catches every time if you have it done correctly. And then you just keep spinning. You just spin it around the rest of the time. This hat I'm going to try to make 99 rows. So I'm just going to keep spinning this for 99 rows. And as you can see, even screwed down to this table, it's still wobbling a ton. So now we're pretty much at the end, just gonna get my last few rows. So all of the machines do come with their own crochet hook, all of the ones I bought at least. And they also come with another plastic needle that's as long as the crochet hook, but I've lost it already. So I have bought smaller replacements. You can get them at Walmart, Michaels, any craft store. And they're just the, the larger needles so that you can fit yarn through it. And they're generally not that sharp, so not too dangerous. So go ahead and thread your needle. And then you're gonna for fast forward a little with the spinning knob. And then you just hook the needle through these loops and pull them off. Just one at a time. Well, I try to do a little more than one at a time, but not too many fit at a time since it's a smaller needle than what it comes with. So I just do a few at a time. And then you just roll forward and keep doing a few at a time until you have it all off of the machine. Okay, so now we're down to the last few rows and we got it off and just kind of, I pull the string tighter just because both ends are going to need to be 
kind of tighter. I go ahead and give it a little stretch. And then I decide which texture I like better, the inside or the outside. I like the outside texture better for my hats. So with the other end, I'm going to go ahead and start pulling it to make it smaller too. And then I want to pull the end of that string through the middle to the other side. So I just grab hold of the end of the string and pull it through to the other side. And now both of those strings I'm just going to want to pull as tight as I can so the opening on one side completely closes up. And then the other side will be the opening for your head. And the reason why I fold them is so it makes it thicker so you don't see your head through it if it stretches. And then I also like how it finishes it so there's a nice texture on the inside and the outside. And makes it completely reversible because both sides will be exactly the same. And if you don't double it up with a fold, the edges on the part you put your head through will start curling up. So it depends really on the style that you want, but I like the really finished looking style. So after I have the tops really tightly pulled and they're really bunched together like a little butthole, I guess, I make either four knots, however many knots you want. I make four or really two double knots. And then with the ends of the string, I go ahead and have one end threaded through the needle, then put it right through the little puckered butthole into the center of the hat. And I have my hand on the inside of the hat to make sure the needle's not going through the other side and just staying in between the two layers of fabric. And then I kind of bunch it up and then pull it through the outside. So the inside of the hat, you won't see the string at all because again, the needle is through the center of the fabric and I'm just now pulling it out the side here and the yarn disappears. And then I just do the exact same thing with the other tail. So the end of the tail completely disappears in the hat and you don't have to worry about a raw end just hanging out or unraveling. So in conclusion, if you are going to buy one of these knitting machines, just kind of think about what it is you want to make with them. Again, this is the one with 48 needles, makes adult and child size hats. This is the one with 40 needles, makes infant hats. And then this is the 22 needle, which makes succulent hats. <laughs> Well, thanks for joining me, everyone, in this uh, very long review of the Amazon knitting machines. If you have any tips or tricks that you'd like to add to this video, feel free to put them in the comments below for me and everyone else to read. Or if you have any other questions that I didn't answer and you're curious about these machines, put that in the comments below also. And again, thank you all for spending time with me today, and have a great rest of your day. Uh, stay crafty out there, crafters. <laughs>